When Adam and Eve willingly stepped into mortality, they knew this celestial world would contain thorns and thistles and troubles of every kind. Perhaps their most challenging realization, however, was not the hardship and danger they would endure, but the fact that they would now be distanced from God, separated from Him, with whom they had walked and talked, who had given them face-to-face counsel. After this conscious choice, as the record of creation says, they saw Him not, for they were shut out from His presence. Amidst all else that must have troubled them, surely this must have troubled them the most. But God knew the challenges they would face, and He certainly knew how lonely and troubled they would sometimes feel. So He watched over His mortal family constantly, heard their prayers always, and sent prophets and later apostles to teach, counsel, and guide them. But in times of special need, he sent angels, divine messengers, to bless his children, reassure them that heaven was always very close and that his help was always very near. Indeed, shortly after Adam and Eve found themselves in the lone and dreary world, an angel appeared unto them, who taught them the meaning of their sacrifice and the atoning role of the promised Redeemer who was to come. From the beginning down through the dispensations, God has used angels as his emissaries in conveying love and concern for his children. Usually such beings are not seen, sometimes they are, but seen or unseen They are always near. Sometimes their assignments are very grand and have significance for the whole world. Sometimes the messages are more private. Occasionally the angelic purpose is to warn. But most often it is to comfort, to provide some form of merciful attention, guidance in difficult times. When in Lehi's dream, He found himself in a frightening place, a dark and dreary waste, as he described it. He was met by an angel, a man dressed in a white robe. He spake unto me, Lehi said, and bade me follow him. Lehi did follow him to safety and ultimately to the path of salvation. In the course of life, all of us spend time in dark and dreary places, wildernesses, circumstances of sorrow or fear or discouragement. Our present day is filled with global distress over financial crises, energy problems, terrorist attacks, and natural calamities. These translate into individual and family concerns, not only about homes in which to live, and food available to eat, but also about the ultimate safety and well-being of our children and the latter-day prophecies about our planet. More serious than these, and sometimes related to them, are matters of ethical, moral, and spiritual decay seen in populations large and small, at home and abroad. But I testify that angels are still sent to help us. Has the day of miracles ceased? Or have angels ceased to appear unto the children of men? Or has he withheld the power of the Holy Ghost from them? Or will he, so long as time shall last, or the earth shall stand, or there shall be one man upon the face thereof to be saved? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, for it is by faith that angels appear and minister unto men. For behold, they are subject unto Christ to minister according to the word of his command, showing themselves unto them of strong faith and a firm mind in every form of godliness. I ask everyone within the sound of my voice to take heart 
be filled with faith and remember the Lord has said he would fight our battles our children's battles and the battles of our children's children what do we do to merit such a defense we're to search diligently pray always and be believing then all things shall work together for our good if we walk uprightly and remember the covenant wherewith we have covenanted the latter days are not a time to fear and tremble they are a time to be believing and remember our covenants I've spoken here briefly of angels dispatched to bless us in time of need but when we speak of those who are instruments in the hand of God we're reminded that not all angels are from the other side of the veil some of them we walk with and talk with here now every day some of them reside in our own neighborhoods some of them gave birth to us and in my case one of them consented to marry me indeed heaven never seems closer than when we see the love of God manifested in the kindness and devotion of people so good and so pure that angelic is the only word that comes to mind my beloved brothers and sisters I testify of angels both the heavenly and the mortal kind in doing so I am testifying that God never leaves us alone never leaves us unaided in the challenges that we face nor will he so long as time shall last or the earth shall stand or there shall be one man or woman or child upon the face thereof to be saved on occasions global or personal we may feel we're distanced from God shut out from heaven lost alone in dark and dreary places often enough that distress can be of our own making but even then the father of us all is watching and assisting and always there are those angels who come and go all around us in the process of praying for those angels to attend us may we all try to be a little more angelic ourselves with a kind word a strong arm a declaration of faith and the covenant wherewith we have covenanted in the sacred name of Jesus Christ Amen